Welcome to Poland in 1920. It's actually, hey, we are playing Warsaw 1920. This was sent to me by Chris Prest, Nanguaya, from up in the old Canada lands. Arrived here the other day, and I finished up the Bastogne game I was playing and got this right on the old table. All right. One mapper, Revolution Games. Uh, this is Russia versus Poland. Now, from what I understand, the desire was for the Russians to occupy Warsaw before August was over. Actually, the middle of August. Okay? So, we've got an eight-turn game that is... You look at the chart there. Sorry for the light. Eight-turn game. Yeah, those are casualties. The white and the light blue are Poles. And the red over there are the Russians. And the game is not waylaid with a bunch of, with I mean, like a ton of special mechanics. I would say that the most detailed mechanic to this game is your operation phases and supply. And when I say supply, that's pretty much for the Russians trying to keep up supply. So the Russians have a couple tables over here, all right, for their fronts, the southwest front and the western front, okay? Now, those things start maxed out at 12 and 8. Um, and then they have the phase chart right here, which you can't see. Phases right here. So they get three phases. Each front gets three phases every turn, all right? If the poles conduct a combat phase, you'll notice the Russians also have a box for the Polish combat phase, and I'll explain to you what that means. All right. So, which, regardless of the front, if the Russians choose to do move on one front, they have to conduct a move on the other front. They can't do separate. They can't have one front doing move and one front doing combat. So if you choose to do move on one, the other one has to move. If you supply the front during a phase, you burn a supply point, and if it's a movement, they get to use their full movement value, and their full, if you choose combat, they get to use their full combat strength. If you choose not to supply them and not burn a supply point, they move half their, their movement value and their attack values are only half. How do you mark that? You take one of these fine little counters here. Now, you can supply one front and not supply the other. But regardless, if you choose move, both fronts move. If you choose combat, both fronts combat. So if you choose supply, you place your supply marker there. You burn a point on that front and you're off and running. Full, full strength and full movement value. If you choose not to supply it, put it on this out of supply side, and everything's half for them, okay? And let me tell you something, half is not very good unless you're just trying to move a hex or two, all right? So that's how that works. Now, during a Polish phase, if the Polish choose to do combat, and they got a bunch of attacks going on, and you want the Russian defenders to have full strength, you got to burn a supply point and then drop a marker in there to let you, to remind you that, hey, I burn a supply point so everybody on that front is full strength when they're defending against Polish combat. All right. Now, the Russians get three phases every turn. And you can see my, my supply charts over here. The southwest front's down to one, and the western front is at five. And the only reason the western front is at five is because they keep taking major cities. Okay, they've taken one, two, three, and it looks like they're about to take number four right here. So course they're out of phases now so we're going to go to the next turn and they get a supply point only one time when they take that city they get one supply point added to their front supply track if they lose it and then take it again they don't get another supply point over here in the southwestern front it's not so fortunate dropping stuff not so fortunate because they've only got one roan they've been they took they took vov here but they got pushed back out by the poles all right, with a mass attack. So this front over here is kind of going, going to, it looks like it's going to go a little stagnant. So they got their two supply points added, but they burned, like I said, they don't have as much to use over here on their chart. So they pretty much burnt theirs out. Um, the poles, they only get for the first turn. Well, let's see, first turn and second turn. The first turn, they don't even get to go. Second turn, they only get one operational phase. On turn three, they choose, they have to choose a counterattack marker. 
that's either going to start on the 5th or the 6th. Now, what I did was just, uh, I chose it blind. That way, I don't know what it is. There's two markers. If they if I flip that thing over, which is on this turn, and they're, they're set to counterattack on the 5th, they're going to lose four victory points at the end of the game. All right? And all your victory points except for um, uh, resupply for the Russians, we'll talk about that in a second, they're all marked at the end of the game. You detect them at the end of the game, which is kind of cool because then I don't know who's what. I do know that the Poles need to hang on to Warsaw, and that's what they're doing. Okay, uh, the Russians supply real quick. So they have one time during the game they can resupply both fronts. They can max out their supply points, but for every two they burn or they use, Poles get one victory point, all right? For every two they use, I think it is, the Russians can redeploy one destroyed unit. Can't use surrendered units. Can't use artillery and you can't use cavalry, but they can redeploy. It's like getting a reinforcement, okay, is what it is. So they can do that. Um, but like I say, they're giving up and they're, they're going to lose phases, operational phases for the turn they do it on. So I think if they use, if they take five supply points, they're going to lose their first phase and they have their second and third. If they take six or more supply points, resupply points, they're going to lose their first and second phases and they'll be able to do their third phase only. So not only do they get their supply back, they get some replacements, but they lose some operational capability. And we're already halfway through the game starting turn five, so that can be painful. Um, it, as I started to play this, I was like, well, man, I... I'm not seeing how the Poles have a chance. And if you look at the setup over here, the Russians just have a mass getting ready to roll through here. And they still have supply for over there. They can they probably got another good turn and a half where they can supply and do their thing. Maybe they can get to Warsaw. Um, Poles get some reinforcements this turn, but so do the Russians. Um, and then the last group of reinforcements will be on turn seven will be will be Polish. So we need to hang on to Warsaw. We need to probably hang on to some of these cities here. So at the end of the game, if the Poles still hold on to Warsaw, they're going to get four victory points for that, okay? So let's hope that that chit, matter of fact, we'll do it right here. Since we're starting the next turn, we'll flip the chit over and see what it is. When will they counterattack? Oh, Lord, they're counterattacking on this turn, so they're going to lose four victory points right off the bat. So that's not... So now they really need to hang on to Warsaw. All right, but this is... Uh, uh, Warsaw 1920 Revolution Games, sent to me by Nanguea. Wanted me to give it a whirl, shoot some video on it. So we're going to finish playing this out, and we'll give you a sort of an after-action report once we're done. All right, talk to you all soon.